This is Houston. Say again, please. Uh, Houston, we've had a ball. Hey there folks and welcome to this Friday Rambling where we have something very exciting and very specific to talk about. One topic only this evening and that is Destiny 2 which had its official reveal yesterday and by reveal we don't just mean a trailer we mean a full-on presentation telling us all about the story, all about the new missions, all about the new gameplay, all about everything. Well, you know, to a certain extent, they didn't give too much away about the raid and they didn't give too much away about certain areas because they want some of it, to, well, they want nearly all of it to feel fresh to you, but they, they did give away a lot of information about this game. They're super stoked about it. After watching what they presented, I'm super stoked about it. So I thought tonight I would make this vlog about all the things that I picked up on while I was watching it. I had homework and notes and everything. <laughs> But there was there was so many bits in it that I thought I better write it down, you know. So if I keep peering over here, it's because I've got some notes about what I picked up on. Didn't want to miss anything. So what I've done is I've taken I've taken their well their whole presentation, but I've I've cut out the clips and stuff that they showed off in between the speakers doing their bit, and I've thrown them up behind me. I may I may do a second version of this vlog, but as always. Because copyright, blah, and everything else, I don't like putting the trailers on the channel with with all of the the sound. So it's usually the music that gets brought up because of it. So I'll have it in the background, hopefully at points that make sense. Certainly at the beginning of this of this vlog, and later on I'll just sort of throw in a few bits. So I've spliced it into sections, and I'll let you see them as, as, as I find them. The first two segments that we show will be kind of in order of what I'm talking about with regards to story and such like. But anyway, let's get cracking, shall we? So firstly, let's just, let's just briefly go over Destiny itself, because Destiny promised so much at the beginning and delivered so little. And it wasn't the one thing it got right from the very beginning was the gameplay. The gameplay was really addictive. It was fantastic first-person shooter gameplay. It was fun being a guardian. It was fun running around shooting stuff. It was fun playing with your mates. It was it was fun. But there wasn't enough content, anywhere near enough content, for it to be fun for a long period of time. It soon got repetitive. It soon got boring. It soon got lots of loading screens. It soon got churning and churning and and, and and not getting an awful lot for your hard work. So there was loads of stuff wrong. And I kind of gave up on it quite early on, as I remember. I didn't get that far with it. Then through... A, a, I mean, through the last two years, they've pretty much reinvented that game in itself. I mean, the core product, gameplay-wise, is the same. But when they did the Taken King DLC, that was a massive DLC. I mean, it was almost like a whole new game at that point. I mean, it was huge. And the amount of stuff it gave you to do, the extra stuff they put in, they kept working on it and they kept listening to the fans and they kept trying to do better. And that's what's impressed me about Bungie more than anything else. Like, it's very, very easy to criticize a game and tell you that it and, and, and go down really hard on it. But when you see a company working so hard to A, make the existing product better, when you know they're already working on the second version of the game, which was Destiny 2, and that's where most of the team was, they never gave up on that original product. And they constantly tried to provide DLC. They constantly tried to keep the community happy with some sort of content. And there were gaps of time where they didn't have something new to give you. But in the main part, they did. They, they worked really hard. To, to try and appease the fans for what they, the fans told them was missing in the first place. And you, you got the sense that when Destiny 2 came around that, that we were going to get a game like we hoped we'd get the first time. So it doesn't make it right, wrong or indifferent. But what I love to see with a company is when they hear that kind of feedback, that they, they get down, they get dirty and they get in there and get it, get it sorted to some degree and level and take it on all of it on board for, for the next iteration of the game. So I can't be more impressed with Bungie as far as that's concerned. So that all said, I've only just got the Rise of Iron DLC and that's got me right back into it just over the last week and a half, two weeks. Started playing it with my mate Craig again and we're both really heavily into it again just trying to get ourselves excited for destiny 2 i hadn't played rise of iron at all so it was the first time i've seen the. i just wanted to see the story through it was cheap on psn and i thought let's just let's just get it so 
that all said with destiny the i was quite excited already about destiny 2 because i felt like they were going to get a lot of the things right in this that they didn't get right in the original so when i first started watching this this broadcast you could see just how excited they were talking about the product and they were already taking the mick out of themselves for the things that even they found as the developers after playing the game for a long period of time were annoying and and you know so they that in its that self humor in itself told you that those things were already going to be fixed before they even said it. So, you know, it was great from that perspective. So the whole thing started off with um, with Zavala, who was your head Titan guy that you used to go and see in the tower to get all your bits and bobs from, and he has a backstory and everything else. It's a the the I'll put the footage up behind me. So it started with this this story of Zavala, which was was his. It's really his story of how the tower came to be, which is your main sort of focal home point where you go to trade and all your goods, see Zavala and and Akora and uh, Cade, I've got his name there for a second, the hunter and the the warlock lady and all of these people. And it's where you, it's, it's the central hub really when you start the game. So it shows you his story in brief as to how the tower came to be and that was his vision and that was him trying to bring humanity together and build the 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 sort of central hub for the guardians to to come to and sort of ends on this sort of high then low note of at some point we're going to get challenged and we're going to be faced with something you know even after building all of this and sure enough after that that presentation of Zavala's story and once again I'll, I'll put the I think the second the second clip that they showed there was a bit of a an interval between Zavala telling his story and then going into they what they effectively did was show the beginning of the game so they showed the baddie arriving they showed what happens and then you go straight into the first level so they showed pretty much the first level off which was called homecoming I think and it's in the tower and it's a massive battle. And it'll be on, again, I will put it up behind me, folks. So while I'm blabbing away, you'll be seeing all of this going on. Now, the the story in itself is, the there was been a bit of a hoo-ha on the run-up to this because people were like, oh, no, we're, 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 they're not letting us port over all of our stuff. It's just the characters we're allowed to port over and nothing else and blah. Now, look, the way that RPGs and MMOs work is, when you start one... <laughs> You're supposed to start with nothing. So what's the point in giving you all that stuff? There is none. And plus, if they gave you all that stuff, there'd be hardly any fun in collecting new stuff because you'd have all this cool stuff already. So whenever you start an RPG, and it doesn't matter which RPG it is, you always start with the very basic stuff. If anything, some of them you start with nothing. <laughs> Pick up a club. You're walking around a forest with a bloody stump. So it's not a surprise to me and it's a, it's actually more surprising that people are moaning about it you know what i mean it's like what did you expect it's just to walk into destiny 2 with all your stuff the whole point of this story is this bad guy turns up and he's head of the faction called the red legion who are a cabal army and this guy isn't trying to take over the universe he isn't trying to do you know anything like you would normally expect from baddie what he's basically doing is he's turned up he's pissed off because he believes that the visitor should have given him the light and his his people the light and ha had them be the ones that were you know trying to protect from the darkness and such like so he's got a big bee in his bonnet and he turns up with this massive fleet of ships as you'll see and destroys the i mean this isn't a spoiler because they're showing it off in the in the clip so they destroy the tower and they put the visitor the big floating ball in the sky they put him in a cage where the light can't get out so that you're actually robbed of your light you're robbed of your, you're robbed of everything and the tower's gone everyone scatters and the whole point of this game is to try and get everything back, to get back what was taken, to bring humanity back together, to bring the Guardians back together, to get your Guardian back up to full power. You know, all of these things are all part and parcel of the story that they want to tell in this second version of the game. And it looks really, really cool from a story point of view. There's a gazillion more story elements to this game than there was in the last one from what we're saying. Yes, all right. If you want to buy it for the year, well, whatever it is, if you want to buy the full pass, it's about 90 quid. But look, I've been playing this game for two years. If I'd paid 90 quid at the beginning and you're going to get all of the massive DLCs for two years, that's like two, that's like paying for two main games at launch. 
I I would buy two main games at launch that I liked, and I would never get that kind of playtime out of them. So I'm not going to grumble about a game that gives me that much quality time, and a game that gives me that much quality time with my friends and, and, and community and such like. So there's a lot of bundles to look at you can you can i think there's three i think you can get the basic and then there's a mid-range one and a, a really high-end one which gives you all of the dlcs and everything and that's the one i'll probably pre-order uh once i get down to it so it, it, this game is out on the 8th of september so we've got a bit of time yet about three months is it or thereabouts so that whole story is built up for us and the first level that you play called, called home i'm sure it was called homecoming is you protecting the tower, then trying to survive the tower because you're not going to be able to save it, and getting out and everything scattering. And it really showed off pretty much the gameplay you'd expect, but there were some new weapons in there. There was some new cool moves in there from your... I think the one they showed off first was the Flaming Sword one where you hover in the air. I'll talk about more, more of them later. So it was showing off a lot of more... An awful lot, really quickly, like boom, straight in. Now, I don't know. I assume that you're not given those powers straight off the bat. Maybe you are. I don't know. But you play in that first level, you've got them anyway. What they mean by robbed of the light, I'm still not 100% sure of. Because if I'm still running around with supers and, and powers, then I'm not quite sure how I've been robbed of my light. So that'll maybe become clearer later on. So, yeah, so the, the enemy is called the Red Legion, their leader, I forget the name of, but anyway, he's a, they're all Cabal, so it's a Cabal army, and Ikora, Zavala, and Cade get scattered after that, so I think uh, Cade ends up on a planet, they all end up on separate planets, actually, which I assume means, I think... Um, as you go around each of the new zones, which we'll also talk about in a minute, I guess they've made it a reason for that being that you'll bump into each of them at each of those sites you go to. So they'll be kind of, I suspect maybe they'll be the hub, you know, where you would go and trade your gear in of that particular area, maybe, or something like that. I don't know for a fact, but they get scattered anyway, because they all, you know, Zavala's kind of down and, and trying to recover from the fact that he's lost everything that he built, his vision. Ikora's trying to deal with her thing. Cade's really pissed off and looking for revenge. So he's run off to a, a planet, one of the new zones. Uh, these guys seem to be far more integrated into the story than they ever were before as well, which is really cool because they're good actors they've got in those positions as well. So it was nice to see them getting some screen time. They've also said that they've got far more in the way of cutscenes, far more in the way of story than they've ever had in any Bungie game before and, and any Activision game for that matter. So they were really, really pushing that. Because I think people felt like they were just running around a world without focus, really, a lot of the time in Destiny 1. So they've gone really heavy on story. Um, so, yeah, so the we've got four, four new areas, three of which are brand new planets altogether. So you've got the European Dead Zone, which is on Earth. So you're not going to be in the bloody Cosmodrome anymore. That's gone. So you've got a, a whole new area on Earth to, to be getting around. These areas are massive as well, and they're far, they look far more open than the previous game as well look far, far what they were talking about which we'll get into in a minute means that there's far more in it as well so you've got the european dead zone which is on earth and it looks like that's where you start the the first settlement is there where you'll go as your central hub point to sort of trade in your gear and stuff like that i assume so that's where the first camp type place is uh you've got the second place is a is Titan, which is a moon of Saturn, which has got a methane type C on it. But there was a human. The humans built like a really cool uh, land base on it, but it's all starting to sink into the ocean. So it's all kind of but it's just masses of water everywhere, and and uh, it looks really interesting. They're all very different environments. You've got the planetoid Zesus, which is where Cade's hiding out, and that's a, a vex. The Vex went to that planet and basically made it there. So a lot of the a lot of the things you see there are Vex created, and the Vex, obviously Vex enemies there. And you've got Io, which is a sulfuric moon. Uh, that's the last. Yeah, that the, the now this is an interesting place because this is one of the last places that the visitor went to before arriving or well, before the collapse, as they call it, which means it was before he came to Earth and stuff. I, so in itself has a lot of lore and history there that we may find out more about the Traveller and about 
what it's all about there. So I'm really interested to see what they've done with that particular place because it looks like that might well be where we get a lot more of that information that we've been craving. So, yeah, so the, the zones look massive. Now, on top of that, so they've, they've brought us patrols are back, enemy encounters are back, public events are back, chests and that sort of thing are back. Now, they're also introducing adventures and side missions which are given to you on the planet by people that you will encounter on the the planet itself which is a brand new thing that's never been there now on top of that you've also got the new hidden areas which uh, i forget what the actual name of them was but they, they are effectively you'll just stumble across them much like you do in something like skyrim and it's like what the bloody hell is this place and you'll drop down into these massive caves and somewhere in there will be a chest of extreme well they said rare loots i think and in order to get that loot you have to there'll be some boss wandering about that's got the key to getting in so it'll be a massive boss fight down there as well so they've introduced stuff like that now the map itself i'm going to change pages here forgetting what order i wrote all of this in but on top of all of that they have introduced a oh it was there steve it was there steve it was on the page you were on can't read your own writing sir <laughs> On top of all of that, they have done something quite remarkable, people. <laughs> They've given us a map. Can you believe it? <laughs> we never had a map in the first game. So, now part of the reason for this is because... Here's, here's the big, here's the biggies, right? They've taken out the need to go back to orbit every time you do a quest. <laughs> right? So, when you go down to one of these planets, you've got free reign. Right, So you go down there and it's not like looking for a little blinking beacon and, and then going and doing your bounties and then going off and blah. It, it's You go down to that planet and all of the quest markers are either on your map or there to discover. And you can go off and you can just do whatever you want. And you don't have to go back to orbit, you don't have to go anywhere. If you don't want to, you can go and you just open your map, look for pointers, look where I've been. All of that stuff and it's all marked there and you can just head straight to where you need to go go exploring, go finding stuff. I mean, it's just exactly what we kind of wanted in the first place. So it's far more interesting. And this is where you'll stumble across these people that will give you the side missions and, and adventures. So as long as it's rampacked full of these things for us to do, it's going to be awesome. You know, I suspect, you know, week to week, you might get changing adventures and you might get the same ones again. But, you know, it, we'll see just how in-depth all of that is as we go. So that's really great because churning for materials, churning for XP, churning for, you know, the weapons and stuff had become really monotonous going around in loops. And it, it became just doing strikes was kind of the only way that, that became interesting. So it's nice that they've focused on that element of the game because it, it, you need to do it in order to get, you know, your, your materials for doing specific upgrading your weapons and stuff like that. So you want to do it in an interesting environment. And while you're there, stumble across something exciting, which is something that doesn't really happen now. If I find a chest at the moment, you just find some splint metal in it. <laughs> Nothing else. It's like, well, that wasn't very exciting. So it looks like the whole finding loot thing has become far more interesting. So that's that's really exciting. Really excited for that. Your warlocks are back, your titans are back, and your hunters are back. So those three categories are the same. That was four, Steve. Three categories. Do it normally, shall we? And they have all new subclasses, which are the Titan has Sentinel, which is a, a, a big glowing void shield, it looked like. And it was brilliant. It's like Captain America jobbers. Like you can either go barging into people with it and take down the enemies with the, the super move. These are the super moves I'm talking about. And you can go barging into the, the enemies with it or you can throw it at the enemies and it kind of bounces around them, killing them off. It was absolutely awesome watching it. Your hunter's got what's called Arc Strike. And that's a, it's a massive staff that he's got that's got lightning sort of flying out of it. And he goes charging into everything with it and sort of swirling it around and doing massive damage that way. And then you've got the warlock who's got Dawnblade, which is a flaming sword. Now, it's quite cool because when you activate the Dawnblade, he leaps into the air or she leaps into the air and starts raining fire down from the sword on top of the enemies and you stay there until the power runs out and then you drop back to the floor so it's kind of this sort of constant aerial thing where you can fire down whereas in previous ones you just sort of jumped and then jumped with like with a big firing hammer and stuff like that so they looked awesome when they showed those off uh, they, they made a specific kind of 
uh, I'm sure they made a specific video of it, which will be up in the background. Two of the videos up in the background, by the way, are them talking through new bits of the show. But obviously you won't hear them talking. You're just going to hear me talking over it. And it, the all of these clips, you can just go to the Bungie YouTube channel and just watch. The, you can watch the whole thing or you can you can find them in snippets, I'm sure, if you go to the, the Bungie channel. So the weapon slots are changing slightly as well because they said they were going to they've been turned into kinetic slot uh energy slot and a power slot now it looks like power slots are what they are they are still heavy weapons effectively but kinetic and energy slots i'm not sure really what that means at the moment so far as does it mean it looks like hand cannons auto rifles and so on and shotguns and such like might Possibly, I don't know, but possibly you might be able to carry two primaries instead of a secondary and a primary or something like that. I don't, I'm don't. i not quite sure. But they, they have mixed it up a little bit, so it's not just primary, secondary, heavy. and so Or it could just be that you do still have a primary and secondary, but you can have kinetic or you can have energy or you can have whatever. So you can have different types in those zones. So it'll be interesting to see more about that and, and what difference energy and kinetic and, and power have on each other. So that was quite interesting to hear as well. So they've mixed that up a little bit. Characters carrying over we've already talked about. There is some bonus materials for people that play Destiny 1 based on how far you got. So you'll get, and they think it will just be cosmetic things like shaders or, you know, colored coloring things in and that sort of thing. Poss uh, I don't think there'll be things like ghosts. If they give you stuff like ghosts, I'm sure there'll be sort of specific type of ghosts with just level three and you have to spelt them at some point. If they do stuff like that, they won't give you Uber equipment. <clears> that would be too unfair on everybody else. And so we've got Strikes and Nightfalls are back, Raids are back, Story Missions are back, Crucible's back. There's been big changes to the Crucible. I don't play the Crucible, but they were saying that all the matches have now become four on four. And they have also given you a brand new HUD in the Crucible, which means that you can you can kind of see what's going on with the other players in your hood. So if, if the other players got their super, you can see they've got their super. So you can make a decision based on it. Uh, you know, if you need to make a quick decision based on someone who's running at you and you you, th you know they've got the super and you haven't, then you can try and get away or, or whatever. You can do all sorts of things, I'm sure. So there is a, and there's a lot more to it than that, but I, I didn't really pay a huge amount of attention to the Crucible stuff because it's not really my cup of tea. And I just don't do PvP. I just don't have the patience for it and I'm not that great at it anyway. So now here's the biggest thing of all, as far as I'm concerned. Well... Maybe maybe joint joint in with making the game more interesting the way that they have. They, from the very beginning of Destiny, they did not want to do a a matchmaking scenario. Now the reason for that is because the two key areas where people struggle to get people to partner up with is where so when you do night for people that don't know when you do a nightfall which is a mission that's very difficult or whether you do a raid which is a mission that's even longer and even more difficult you need to have well in order to accomplish them really in the stri in the in the nightfall you should have 3 people and it's a maximum of 3 but in a raid it's 6 now, trying to get six people together at any given time or what have you is pretty difficult. So I think on the Xbox and, and PlayStation, you have this ability to go out and, and on, on the Destiny app, you can put a post up saying, I'm looking for someone to do a nightfall, I'm looking for someone to do a raid or whatever. And you can invite people in via the app and stuff like that. It's a bit, it, it's really tedious, really, because you can't, as opposed to just firing up the game and letting it find people for you. Now, I... What the way they explained it was, and I understand this completely, they what they wanted to build in Destiny and have done to a huge, huge extent is build a community of people that like playing together. So you don't end up with total twats <laughs> just joining games and dicking around and not helping and not communicating. And, and so they wanted to make it a fun online experience, not an experience where people just ended up not doing stuff because... They were fed up with playing with dimwits that, that weren't, you know, taking it seriously and enjoying it the way that, that the level that they were enjoying it at. So that's why the matchmaking was never there. So what they've done is instead of just introducing matchmaking, and the other thing is 50, well, 50% 50 of people that play Destiny aren't playing 50% of its content because they can't find, like, there's a lot of times I play Destiny on my own. So... 
I don't want to have to have or have to find all of these people to, you know, to, to, to play there. I, I don't know. It's too difficult. Like I can't find five people to go and play a, a, a raid with. And also, will I find five people that are patient enough for me to learn that raid? They're difficult things to learn. It takes you several attempts to get half decent at them. So, and I'm a, I'm a decent destiny player. I'm not, I'm not an amazing destiny player. You know, I'll always have your back. I'll always go out my way. I'll always throw my, my, myself into the fight, but I'm not the best player in the world. So you, to find a team that wants to spend a little bit of patient time with you to help you through it and such like, so th these are the sorts of things that need to be addressed rather than just letting any old sod join your clan and, or your, your fire team and off you go. So what they've done is they've, they've created a thing called guided games. Which means, well, they've done they've done two things. I don't know how well clans work on the current one because I don't have one. But they've brought in clans, which means that clans, if you're a member of that clan, that clan can always play together. So if you've got a clan and you've got six people and you can go and play a strike, fine. You can build your clan up that way. You can have more than that in your clan. You can have a clan of however many you want, I believe. So whoever is on at, online at the same time as you, you just go and get your clan guys in and go off and do your raid or your nightfall or whatever. However, what about the people like me who is playing on his own or maybe just playing with one friend and we don't have four other friends to play a raid with or whatever. So what they've done is with guided games, you can go and uh, f basically put yourself up for a clan to say, look, we, I, I'm on my own and I need uh, somebody to play a raid with. I'm looking for a clan to play with. And that clan might be sat there with only five people tonight because, you know, Johnny's working night shift or whatever. Or might only have two people because only four of them are online. So guided games effectively lets you puts you up there, lets them say, yeah, fine, come and join us. And you can go off and do the raid. So it makes it dead simple. You can do it in game. You don't have to use apps. You don't have to do all that sort of stuff. You just boom, off you go. And it's all because it's all connected. You don't have to make them friends. You don't have to do any of that sort of stuff. And if it goes well, and if you join in and really like it, maybe they'll add you to the clan, or maybe you'll start creating a clan that they're a member of as well, and there might be multiple clans going on. So that, uh, so th they've done it in a way that's actually brilliant because they've 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 kept a safe, well, they've they've saved what they believe is the right frame of mind for this type of game, which is to make sure that the people you're playing with are people that are gonna give it the same kind of love and affection that you do when you're playing it and not just go there and dick around. Because if if you look like someone that's just going to go there and dick around, the clan can just go, well, no, it's all right. There's another guy over here, we'll use them, or another girl over there, and we'll use her because she looks like she's more you know, more into it than you are. Or whatever. So the decisions can be made on the fly, and you, you should be able to pick up a game like that, just like you do on the apps at the minute where people say, I'm looking for someone to do this with or whatever. So that is going to make a massive difference to my experience. I have only ever tried a raid once and my connection at the time I was in another location and the broadband wasn't great and my connection at the time just kept bombing out and uh, I just never tried it again when I moved and had good broadband because uh, I didn't have any means of doing it because I don't know enough people to go and play a raid I certainly by this point most people playing raids are way above and beyond my level probably of that if I went into a raid I'd be the one everyone was laughing at effectively <laughs> I think that was what we're trying to say so that is genius for me and that's what I was hoping for in this version of Destiny because that will open up 50% of a game that I never touched and the, the I mean to be honest the, the raids are by far the biggest challenge and the most interesting bit anyway but, certainly at the moment i mean the interest level might be just as heavy on the planets now they've done what they've done with the map and the, the quests and all this sort of stuff <clears throat> but the raids are the biggest challenge in this game you get one now what launch you'll get another one at some point after that there's two massive expansions coming which you get automatically if you buy into the 90 pound version through the next well i'm sure it'll be longer than a year it'll be the i assume that pass gets you all the way to the end of destiny 2 is <clears throat> what it seems to be anyway so there you are. So that, that was all of the key bits. There's so much in there. I hope I've, I've covered about as much as I remembered and jotted down. There was, a, there was also a mention of a partnership with Sony. Sony had provided all the PS4 Pros for them to play on 4K with that, that evening. There is exclusive content for PlayStation players <clears throat> for a whole year before anybody else gets it. <clears throat> so they are still even now much, much heavier into the PlayStation partnership than they are with Xbox. So 
if you're into the exclusive content type of stuff, then you might want to think, and you've got both options, you might want to think about PlayStation first. And and yeah, so I, I couldn't be more excited for it. I I was not worried, but I, I was when I've been playing Rise of Iron, it's been like, I really hope they get it right this time because the mechanics and, and, and playing with mates and stuff is so fun that I just want the world to be as interesting and as fun as the as the mechanics of fighting and, and, and the friendships as well. But I'll tell you, one of the biggest things that, that really shone through was just how passionate they are about the game and just how much they want it to be fun. I mean, the guy said, he said, look, our main aim making Destiny 2 was to get you, the player's gun, in front of the enemy's faces as quickly as possible, not be in loading screens, not be in orbit, not be, you know, in front of the enemies exploring the worlds out there doing it and and these guys play their own game they love their game so much they're on there playing it with everyone else so they want it to be fun and interesting as well and that kind of that's contagious that if if you're that excited and you're that committed to your game and you put that much work into it even though you made a lot of mistakes in the first version that is a contagious thing and, and people will will get well into this game without any shadow of a doubt so destiny 2 8th of September, cannot wait, I will get it pre-ordered once I'm sorted out um, in a month or so. There's a few things happening which I'll tell you about at some point uh, in, the, in the coming weeks, people, in the coming weeks. So I'll pre-order it at some point very soon though. There you are, there is my Destiny 2 info vlog for you. I hope it's been helpful, I hope it's, it's uh, saved you having to watch the whole hour's worth of their presentation. However, it looks like I've rattled on, well, yeah, you go, I've saved you half an hour. <laughs> I've been talking for 30 minutes, people. Good Lord. Didn't know I could talk so much. I don't know what I did. So there you are. It has been an honour and a privilege, as always, serving for you in this vlog today. And I shall see you all soon. Take it easy, guys. Bye. Hi, Cora. If you tell me this is a practical joke, well, it kills me to say it, but I, I would be really impressed. Impressing you, Kate, is the easiest thing I'll do all day. Hi, Cora. What have you got? Someone or something has sabotaged the Skyline defense systems. Every sensor beyond the wall has gone dark. Battle stations! Everyone with me, now! taken our home, and now they threaten our very existence. But if we attack together, we can take back our home, or we die trying.